Hi everybody, the uh, purpose of this lecture is to give you guys a very, very brief overview um, of Taoism here, um, now that we're starting our um, third unit um, for World Religions. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, and um, this is basically the, the intro, the four key questions, basic overview and four key questions um, to Taoism with that um, here. Um, and in all honesty, um, this is a really, really kind of interesting unit and one of the, the, the cooler but also odder, for lack of a better word, things to, to teach and that we kind of study all year. Um, Taoism itself is a bit of a misnomer. It probably, probably should be called Religions of China because like, there's not like just pure Taoism by itself. It's a mixture of Taoism with a little bit of Confucianism and Buddhism in it. Um, there are also two types of Taoism. There's very kind of like classical Taoism, like I'm going to go be a monk in the mountains and like never see anybody and be one with nature. And then there's also folk Taoism, which is like hardcore polytheistic, like classical, like indigenous religions, really, really cool stuff with like all sorts of interesting festivals and, and stuff along those lines. We're going to kind of be talking about both here um, as we go through it. Um, now, um, just for the record, um, and we'll do this in class right after we've read uh, the Tao of Pooh and stuff like that, um, but just for the record, um, that is the uh, symbol of the great ultimate right there. You would probably call it a yin-yang. Um, and by the way, it is yin and yang, not yin and yang, just for the record as well. Um, but that is the symbol of the great ultimate, um, uh, also known as a yin-yang. Um, and yin and yang are just the two opposing forces that make up Taoism. And so like the, the, the symbol of them together with white on one and black on the other and, and vice versa and how um, opposites kind of uh, are, are, are parallel and important to this religion um, is key in what you see at the beginning here. Um, but it is technically the symbol of the great being or the great ultimate, also known as a Tai Chi too. Um, speaking of which, by the way, before we go any further, welcome to the uh, Doran Butcher's um, Chinese Words part of class. And by the way, when it comes to butchering words, um, I just seem to be better doing it at Chinese than almost any other language going, so I really do apologize for my poor pronunciations throughout the course of this. Speaking of which, and just so we're on the same page, um, this, for the record, is China. It is also really big. I think we clarified India was big when we were talking about India and got to this, but this is, this is China. It is really, really big. Um, and uh, it is the, uh, the, the pretty much unique home of Taoism. And, and the bulk of, uh, or the only thing we're really going to be talking about without drifting out into a few other like places that like, you know, Taoism spread with Chinese culture is going to be in and around um, here. So just so we've got that down, this is China. Um, and before we get to the, uh, the next couple parts here, um, uh, this is a, a map, or not a map, sorry, this is a timeline for you right here. Um, this actually gives you um, Confucianism and Taoism at the same time. Confucianism and Taoism kind of go back and forth in Chinese religions in a lot of different ways, um, as we'll talk about throughout this. Um, and, uh, and like when one is powerful, the other's not, and, and stuff along those lines. They actually complement each other pretty well. Um, and the, the main things that we'll focus on are kind of like, you know, early Taoism, um, and then, um, you know, we'll do some about like kind of Taoism through like the bulk of like, you know, um, I don't know, uh, classical China and stuff along those lines. And then after that, um, Taoism is going to fall out of favor for the bulk of much of medieval China. Um, as you guys can see in, in this slide right here. Um, and so actually there, there ends up being kind of a huge jump in this religion and how it's, uh, how it's kind of uh, studied and followed and that there's not a whole lot on Taoism done uh, for roughly like, you know, uh, almost a thousand years of Chinese history because it was pretty much suppressed, if that makes sense. And then it, it emerges back again in the beginning of the 20th century. Um, and, uh, and then it goes through a really interesting, Um, period of time in the in the 20th century in which it is um, oppressed really hardcore, um, especially during the Cultural Revolution. Um, during that time, Taoism actually makes its way over to Taiwan, where it starts to thrive in Taiwan. Um, and then um, Taoism is kind of slowly reestablished um, by the Chinese government kind of tacitly, and it's actually thriving in China right now as well. Um, so it's got this real kind of up and down uh, uh, march to it, if that makes sense. And that's what the, the timeline was essentially showing you here. Okay, so let's get to the uh, the basic overview here. Um, so uh, this is the last of the major old world religions, um, religions of the world, um, which is uh, in, in heavy air quotes, um, hardcore. Um, but what I mean by that, of the ones that we study, um, uh, Hinduism, uh, 
Judaism, Taoism, Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam, uh, Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam are all based off the other three um, in some way, right? And so this is the last of the kind of like original um, older religions of the world, if that makes sense, that we're going to study. And the last one, um, as far as we know, um, that we can get back like date-wise and stuff like that, it goes back to at least 17... Um, 51 BCE, but it's probably a lot older. Um, it's probably a lot older. We just don't know. It was probably followed through like, you know, um, uh, uh, oral tradition and stuff along those lines, but we honestly have no clue. And in all honesty too, um, we don't even know how much of this is kind of legend versus how much of this is like, you know, the early stories of Taoism and founding, how much of that is legend versus how much of that, like, you know, is actual history versus how much of this hagiography, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like, you know, there's some people that would say that Lao Tzu or Lao Tzu, um, the founder of Taoism is like, you know, a real person and there are others that would say there's no way he exists. The general consensus is probably like Abraham. He's a bunch of people um, put together to kind of create a founding, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as we get there and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> It's also the least officially codified of any of the major um, religions that we're going to study. It is really a blend of religions. Like, the, 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 you guys know that I do a lot of work with IB in setting up the new course, and the whole reason I, I actually even got into that, the way I started, the whole thing I wrote my letter about was I basically was like, guys, you guys do a horrible job in your curriculum with Taoism, and you can't isolate, like, this many, like, you know, students from China and of Chinese, like, descent and stuff along those lines by, like, how bad you do it. Um, and, and, and they actually listen. Um, and since then, that's what I've been, um, well, I do a bunch of other stuff, obviously, too, but that was what gave me the end was basically by saying, like, this is not, this IVs is not done well, because, as I said, what it really should be is religions of China, um, and it really should be, you know, hey, there's this, this, um, uh, classical Taoism that is like, you know, separate and like, you know, different and practiced by, practiced by a few monks. And then there's a blend of Taoism, Confucianism, and Buddhism that most Chinese that practice religion in some way tend to practice. Okay. Um, but instead they just kind of separated it out. And this is why, you know, originally IB tried to make it so that religions and culture were not embedded. And that's why we need to redo the courses to make sure that we put religion into culture and stuff along those lines. But you guys know all this because you've heard me complain about this all year and stuff like that. Anyway, um, back to this. Oh, actually, um, quick side tangent before I get there. Um, Taoism, spelled with a D, okay, uses the um, pinyin version of um, translating um, Chinese to um, uh, uh, Western characters. Um, quite often you will see Taoism spelled with a T, uh, T-A-O-I-S-M. Um, that uses the older Wade Giles method, um, which uh, is entirely unacceptable on an academic um, level for this point, but for some reason in religion that seems to have stuck a decent amount, okay? So things are moving towards Taoism with a D. It's pronounced Taoism either way, whether you see it with a D or a T. Um, but that's why, like, they're different, like, from time to time I have different names, like Lao Zi and Lao Zhu you see up there, like, one's the Pinyang with the original, the way, the one that should be done, and Lao Zhu is the way Giles one, the older way that really probably shouldn't be used. So, um, if you see these, these are the same thing and the same person, but I just want you guys to understand that, that it's just a, a way of kind of translating the Chinese characters. Okay, the closest thing this has um, to a founder is a dude by the name of Lao Zi, okay? Um, he, if he existed, as I said, he existed um, around the 1751 BCE. Um, whether or not, he, he's credited for writing down something called the Tao Te Ching, which is the main book within Taoism, um, the key original thing, at least in classical Taoism. Um, but a lot of stories about him are fantastical. Um, uh, uh, my personal favorite is that he um, existed in his mother's womb for 60 years and then was born an adult, which sounds really painful um, on a lot of levels. Um, and, uh, um, so that, that's why, uh, historians tend to kind of question it. Um, regardless, um, all, uh, all things do agree on one thing. He had very large ears. Anytime you see Lao Zi, you're looking at a dude with a, or see a picture of a dude with very large ears, you're looking at Lao Zi. That's, that tends to be a common, um, trait they said. Hey, it's better than Confucius. All primary sources on Confucius just argue he was really, really ugly. That's literally what the primary sources say is that he was super ugly, right? So, I mean, big ears, I guess, is, is, is slightly preferable to that as long as you're dealing with, like, um, founders of religion and stuff like that. Um, it's the fourth largest religion in the world. That has a little bit of an asterisk next to it. The reason for that asterisk next to it is because, um, if you'd forgotten this, um, technically, um, Karl Marx, well, Karl Marx said that religion was the opiate of the masses, which means technically that communism and religion aren't supposed to jive, which means technically the Chinese government won't acknowledge its citizens as being religious. So when we do this, we have to guess, and we guess that it's got about 400 million followers, almost exclusively in China, making it the fourth largest religion in the world, but we're not entirely sure because it's pretty much impossible to get um, official statistics on this. The vast majority of all modern-day Taoists live in China and Taiwan, where it is thriving like crazy.
Um, it is unquestionably polytheistic. It is not like even like Hinduism or something like that, where it's like, you know, was had polytheistic tendencies, but now claims to be monotheistic and stuff like that. No, it is polytheistic. There is a heavy emphasis on ancestor worship. There's a heavy emphasis on multiple gods, um, stuff along those lines, etc., etc. That's one of the reasons it's so cool, but it really does function like a very, very ancient religion, if that makes sense from time to time. Um, it does believe in the oneness of the soul after death for the most part. Um, if you do amazing things, you can actually like leave the soul entirely and reach turn to one with the Tao to be in a state of non-being perfection known as Wu, which is like complete and totally like perfect. You could also achieve immortality, so you might decide to keep the oneness of the soul. You might also decide to return to the Tao. That's up to you. Um, <clears throat> regardless, when you do die, you end up um, in a spirit world or something like that after death. Um, and depending on um, whether or not you have practice the ways of the Tao or which version you're reading to, um, it is sometimes possible um, to be uh, reincarnated from time to time. Um, you can also um, extend life um, uh, through immortality and, and balancing your chi and stuff like that. And if you become really awesome with perfectly balanced chi, you can actually become immortal where you get like really, really cool powers like, you know, like being able to walk through mountains and fly. Um, just for the record, like these are things that happened back in the day and people talk about it. There are not people just like walking through mountains and flying throughout China that you just suddenly were unaware of and, and and now become aware of. No, that's not how it works, but that is what the texts say, which is pretty cool. Um, speaking of which, the sacred texts of these things um, include um, um, the Dada Jing, which is the big one. Um, that'll be one of the first things we look at, but that's more classical Taoist than folk Taoist. Um, we've got the Yi Jing, or the Book of Changes, which gets us way more into the folk Taoism, or the way it's actual practiced. Uh, we've got the writing of Xuanzi, we've got the Da Zhang, etc., etc. Um, there are a number of holy sites. Almost all of them happen to be mountains, or up high, for obvious reasons. Like, you know, mountains are closer to, like, the deep, the gods, and so, like, you go up there, the five march mounts are, like, the five key mountains of China. Um, you've got the Temple of Heaven. Um, you've got Kunlun Mountain, which is, like, you know, um, uh, what was I going to say, the, uh, the, um, uh, uh, mythological and was kind of like Mount Olympus of like the Chinese gods and stuff like that. And then finally, guys, most of the holy days for Taoism um, fall within like what are almost considered traditional Chinese holy days as well, like uh, the Hungry Ghost Festival, um, the Lantern Festival, the Dragon Boat Festival, the New Year, etc., etc. Um, we find that happens in both Taoism and Buddhism a decent amount. It also happens in Hinduism actually a decent amount as well, if you think about it. Though they might happen to be religious holidays, like they also become very cultural and stuff like that, like Diwali and stuff like that. Um, so like, you know, if you've heard of them, and that, that's actually true in all religions, more as I just kind of go through it, it happens in the Abrahamic religions too. Um, if you've heard of some of these these holidays from a non-religious point of view, they're not really religious now, but they did originally start that way and, and, and stuff like that. Okay, um, so with, uh, with um, uh, that in mind, let's start talking about the four key questions here, and then we'll take a really quick kind of guided look at the Tao Te Ching, um, chapter one, before I, I end you guys here or with this. Okay, so classical Taoism says um, virtually nothing is about the origin of the universe. So all of our ideas on creation stories um, come from folk Taoism, right? Like kind of the, the original indigenous religion and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, um, and, and much like in Hinduism, there are tons and tons and tons of different creation stories, um, some of which I'll read you that involve large eggs and snake-like emperors that, like, you know, dominated the world for an extended period of time and, you know, people living for thousands of years and stuff like that. But at the center, they all have one commonality, and that is this idea of balance, which is going to be really key, key in, ba in Taoism. Um, balance, right? Um, and, and they all speak of a time that the Tao, or the Wei, was ruled by the Yellow Emperor who promoted virtue, right? And, uh, and, and most people don't think the Yellow Emperor actually existed. Um, but, like, the world was in balance with virtue and stuff like that and then like you know it got thrown out of balance right because humans have tried to do too many things classical Taoism and parts of folk Taoism actually argue that like the world was in balance naturally and that like we have done a number of things trying to throw it or do, doing we've done a number of things to the world which doing that has thrown it out of balance right um, and so there was this time and then the world got thrown out of balance okay um, and we will uh, we will talk in a little bit more detail about more of those stories as we go through that's just kind of the broad overview um, and and so since then our world has just kind of degenerated as human beings have fallen out of touch with the Tao um, the reason we're not we're um, <clears throat> out of touch with the Tao is because we don't do a good job of practicing this thing called Wu Wei, which like um, can be seen as inaction, it can be seen more as effortless action, it doesn't mean doing nothing, we'll talk about that later, it just means involves acting at the right times and not acting or overacting too much, if that makes sense.
Okay, so this gets us to the uh, the question of what is the human condition, okay? And the human condition is this, is that our world is perfectly balanced when it's in tune with the Tao. Now, do not read this as our world is perfectly good, everybody sings Kumbaya, and there's peace and stuff like that. There are things that are are what humans would call both good and bad, okay? Here's the thing, that's why I say humans would call it. The Tao is so incredibly complex, you can't comprehend it fully, etc., etc., okay? It represents everything, and it represents the natural balance that makes up the world and that the world is, right? Okay, in order to explain that balance, humans talk about how things are good and bad, about how things are yang, which is good, and yin, which is bad, okay? Um, but in all honesty, the whole thing's like some massive like chemistry or algebraic equation and stuff like that, okay? Um, and in classical Taoism, there, there really isn't a good or bad. There is just a, a balance. That's the goal, okay? Um, and by the way, this, this, this labeling and, and categorizing and stuff like that gets, because it is an ancient religion, um, very, very misogynistic and patriarchal. Um, when putting things together, um, human, or not human, sorry, um, men fall into the yang um, category, and women fall into the yin category, to give you ideas and stuff like that. Um, light falls into the yin category, dark falls into the yin category, stuff like that. But all these things make up a world that is naturally balanced, okay? And so in all honesty, the answer to where, what is the, like, you know, um, or sorry, not, not what is the human condition, the answer, sorry, the answer to what is the human condition is, well, the human condition is that things were perfectly balanced and, like, now things are out of balance, okay? Um, and being unable to appreciate this perfection, humans started interfering with the world. They started doing things like, you know, building roads, knocking things down, building structures, etc., etc. At its heart, as you guys can probably guess, and one of the case studies that um, we have to read on this is this, Taoism is very, very, very environmentally friendly and like, you know, return to the environment type of thing, stuff like that, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> classical Taoism seeks to re rebalance the world through Wu Wei, okay? Now, Wu Wei um, is generally translated as inaction, okay? But it's really not inaction. It's effortless action. It's not forcing the action too much, okay? Um, so, for example, the perfect, like, thing about, like, the perfect example of Wu Wei is, like, you know, you say, like, hey, I'm going to go do, like, X right now, okay? And then you get there, and there's this massive line, and it's going to take, like, you know, um, uh, like 45 minutes, throw your entire schedule out of whack, etc., etc. Or you could figure out another way to still do X, if that makes sense. Maybe later, maybe something like that. Effortless action. Now, that's an oversimplification of it, but that's what we mean by that, and that's what we need to do in the world, is not force things as much, but any action we do make it fairly effortless and stuff like this. This is uh, illustrated by something called a poo, which I absolutely love because I'm immature, um, an uncarved block um, that's meant to present, represent like perfection via inaction. Okay. Now, classical Taoism says that basically, like, you know, we achieve this, like, balance and perfection through something called, like, internal alchemy, which is, like, you know, um, uh, um, like, uh, uh, meditation or possibly um, Tai Chi or stuff along those lines, right? Um, but folk Taoism adds that humans can um, harness this imbalance through stuff like external alchemy, um, which sometimes involves um, uh, elixirs that are created and stuff like that. There's a whole chart that involves like kind of how you balance your, your um, life force or your chi, as it's called, um, stuff along those lines, um, concoctions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, physical and mental ones. Um, and that when that happens, like, as I said, they can achieve like, you know, perfect balance of their chi and and perfect balance leads to basically almost kind of being able to bend the powers of time and space, if that makes sense. There, there's supposedly about eight people that have ever achieved this, um, the eight immortals of China, if that makes sense. Um, but that, that becomes kind of the ultimate goal of the human condition through balance. But the human condition is that, like, you know, our world um, is out of balance because we threw it out of balance. And so that brings us to the where are we going part, which is we need to get it back into balance. Um, and so, actually, the, the simplest question for every, for maybe anything, other than maybe uh, Judaism's uh, where are we going, which is we don't care, we're going to the Messianic Age. Uh, classical Taoism's is also pretty simple, too. It's, uh, we're already there, we just don't know it. Um, now, it gets a lot more complicated than that as we go through, um, but that's classical Taoism's kind of uh, answer to, like, where are we going through this? Because classical Taoism doesn't really worry about an afterlife or anything like that. It seeks to um, balance and attempt to balance um, uh, um, the world, right? Um, <laughs> And it argues that by, like, uh, restraining Wu Wei, by attempting to not um, do too many things, um, et cetera, et cetera, to the world, we can bring it back into balance. <clears throat>
The end result of this is that quite often this leads to classical Taoists essentially being kind of hermits in the mountains. They will, they will very often like you know, um, go off, go live in a place where they live almost as an ascetic, if that makes sense, where they're able to do meditation. Um, the classical Taoism, there, there, there are a few hundred really hardcore classical Taoists still going, and that's about it. These are people, guys, that in like 1985, 1990, you could go up to the top of the mountain and you could say, "So, what are your opinion on Chairman Mao?" And they'd be like, "Who?" Right? And that would have been like after like the whole cultural revolution, Mao had been done, like et cetera, et cetera. And they're actually documented things. We'll, we'll watch a video on this um, later on as we as we get into this about classical um, Budo Taoists in the mountains of China, if that makes sense, right? And so their idea is that like we need to bring the world kind of back into balance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, where we're going in folk Taoism is very, very, very different and way, way, way cooler. Um, we're going to a spirit, spirit world. Um, some places say it has a heaven, some things says it has a hell, some things that say it has multiple hells. Um, but we're also going to, um, uh, you know, uh, spend a lot of time in the spirit world kind of worshiping like ancestors and dealing with ancestors and stuff along those lines. Um, the spirit world, by the way, just for the record, is not like Kung Fu Panda 3, okay, since that often comes up. And also just like Kung Fu Panda 3, um, you cannot steal people's chi. That is not a thing in any way whatsoever, right? Um, so if one dies without harnessing your chi, and your chi is a life force that flows through you, right, etc., etc., um, it represents... Um, there, there is chi everywhere. There is chi in you. There is chi in me. There is chi between us. Um, it is an invisible life force that you cannot see centered around the center of your abdomen, right where your navel is, known as your cinnabar fields. Okay, um, and your chi can be harnessed and moved around based on alchemy, both internal and external alchemy type of things that we'll talk about that, that involve kind of ways to balance your body. Um, you guys may have seen this before, but there are like five key elements in Taoism, um, and each of those elements has a balance and a counterbalance, and you want to basically like balance those throughout those, right? Now, um, um, if one dies without perfectly harnessing their chi, which the vast majority of us do, um, we go to heaven, hell, the spirit world, whatever you want to call it. Um, the uh, the name for it is kind of debatable. In all honesty, a lot of Chinese um, uh, traditions call all of the afterlife, whether you're being tortured or not, hell. And the reason before this is actually imperialist. Okay, because the British and other people got there and they were trying to explain to the Chinese that they weren't Christian. And then they basically say to them, if you're not Christian, you're going to hell. Right. And the Chinese would be like, oh, yeah, 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 we're going to the afterlife. We're going to hell. Right. And so like they took hell and they just decided that's what the Christians meant as the afterlife. Not like, hey, you're going to be tortured forever by some like satanic being or something like that. But hey, you're just, hey we're going to the afterlife. We're going to hell. And so like the, the translation for that became like, you know, any type of afterlife or something like that. Um, and you go there, and um, there you have all sorts of things. Um, depending on the version of it, you can have, um, you know, a horrible, torturous hell where, you know, people, like, you know, every single night, like, horrible demons try to eat you. You can have a very chill um, uh, afterlife where, like, you know, um, everything's, uh, like, you know, you're learning more about the Tao, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you can have it as a paradise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, as a matter of fact, like, the afterlife is actually supposed to be in this place where, like, everything um, is mirrored um, on Earth perfectly, right? So, like, for for example, like, you know, um, if you do X on Earth, um, then Y happens in the afterlife. We'll talk about this when we get to, like, um, uh, um, like ancestor worship and stuff like that. But this is where you get, like, things, and this does happen, where people go to a temple and they spend real money to buy fake money, to burn that fake money, to send it up to their ancestors um, so that they can have that in the afterlife and stuff like that. Okay, because that's where most people end up going is the ancestor world. There is no official, like, eschatology or anything along those lines. There are some, like, oral traditions about, like, what happens at the end of the world, but there's no type of consistency in any way whatsoever. We'll take a lot of time to explore the afterlife because, like, that relationship and the relationship between that and ancestor worship becomes really, really important in, um, in Taoism or, and or uh, other well, indigenous Chinese religions, whatever you want to call it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, yeah, as, and the last thing I want to talk about here is, uh, is um, how do we get there? And um, we get there um, by following the Tao, which, as I've been over, is uh, both good and bad, everything and nothing, alive and dead, a state of being and non-being, etc., etc., which is, makes, you know, everything really easy and nice and simple to comprehend. Um, so, in other words, um, how do we do this, um, in all honesty? Well, we do this by a balance, okay? And you do this by balancing yin and yang for your... Um, 
for your um, classical Taoist, that's going to involve living a contemplative life. Um, it's going to involve like a hermetic life with lots of meditation, um, trying to understand and work with nature and realizing that things that are naturally there are good and, and balanced and stuff like that. It's going to involve following Wu Wei, as I've mentioned for a couple of times. Now, here's the better example I wanted to give you guys with Wu Wei, but I was waiting till the like perfect, uh, or not the good perfect time, the good time in this to make it work, right? Is, um, let's say that, like, you're trying to follow Wu Wei, okay? And it's not that dissimilar from, like, ancient Greek ideas of Stoicism, okay? Um, if you hear that your child is drowning, okay, Wu Wei doesn't say that you should just be like, oh, well, you know what, let's see if the child sinks or swims. No, 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 no. If you hear your child's drowning, by all means, go freaking help him out like crazy and make sure that he doesn't drown, okay? That's the effortless action that's needed to make this thing happen, okay? But, 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 if you hear your child has drowned, then you should be able to make peace with the situation and move on because there is nothing you can do about that. Um, I'm not saying that's the way it would actually work. If I heard my child had drowned, I would be, like, despondent for God knows how long, like, years probably, right? But, like, that's the idea behind it is that you need to just kind of make peace with it and move on because, like, there's balance, there's good and bad, etc., etc., right? Um... The, uh, the folk Taoist is going to um, do a more active thing of trying to reconcile opposites, okay? Um, much like Newton's law, for every action, there's kind of an equal and opposite reaction. So, for example, if um, I said there's going to be, like, balance, let's say that, like, for example, you're getting bloody noses all the time, right? That means you have too much fire in your body. So what do you need to do? You need to go to an alchemist who's going to give you an elixir, who's going to have you drink something that, like, you know, is going to get rid of some of the fire in your body by, like, putting water or, I uh, got I think it's water that balances fire. I've forgotten my elemental balances perfectly. Um, but stuff like that. Um, and so that's how you're going to get there is by balancing your chi. Um, there is also like reverence for ancestors and corresponding rituals that go through this, but those are going to be the main kind of active things as far as what do you do in Taoism. And, and they come through in the alchemy and then the rituals and stuff like that and the reverence for ancestors. Okay, guys, so that's kind of the overview of, like, Taoism right there. As I said, there's a lot to unpack here, a lot that probably made sense and didn't make sense. As I often say in Taoism to my students, for those of you that had me, you've heard me say, hey, does that make sense? I say that all the time, like, as a way to, like, make sure my students got it. When we're in Taoism, what I often say is, so do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Because it's not always going to make sense. And this is the ultimate religion of, like, if you like things in neat little packages, like, this is about to just completely blow everything that you like apart. Um if that makes sense. Um, and so that's kind of where we land. Um, the last thing I want to go over real quickly before we uh, do this um, is the first uh, chapter of the, of the Tao Te Ching, which we'll look at a few times. Now, to do this, I'd like to show you guys um, a picture of the Temple of Heaven complex in Beijing. Um, and this is actually the, uh, the symbol of the, uh, the home, of, home of the Supreme Yang. Um, which is where the uh, Chinese emperor would go to pray for great harvests and to make sure that the uh, the gods um, were were with them and and following them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and so this is what happens when you're when you're entering the, the Temple of Heaven complex there. Um, and I always thought it was just kind of a because this is the center of Taoism right here, a great thing to look at um, to get to like all right, let's look at what is the the first like you know scripture of Taoism right here. And uh, here it is in all its radiant glory. And for those of you that have Mainers and TOK, you've probably looked at this, at least in pre-pandemic world, you would have looked at it. I actually don't know what her curriculum has been since pandemic and stuff like that. But let's check this out. The way, or the Tao, the way that can be spoken of is not the constant way. The name that can be named is not the constant name. The nameless was the beginning of heaven and earth. The named was the mother of the myriad creatures. Hence, always rid yourself of desires in order to observe its secrets, but always allow yourself to have desires in order to observe its manifestations. These two are the same, but diverge, diverge in name as they issue forth. Being the same, they are called mysteries, mystery upon mystery, the gateway of the manifold secrets. Um, you guys were not at Skyline when this uh, former teacher, who I enjoyed very much, by the way, uh, by the name of Miss Rendell, um, used to teach here. This was about 10 years ago or so. And uh, she summed this up perfectly one time, and she said, uh, she and I actually used to share an office way back in the day, like when I was a first-year teacher. And she looked at me when I was, I was doing something with this, and she said, Paul, um, you know, somebody gave me a copy of the Tao Te Ching um, when I graduated from high school, and I read all of it, and I didn't understand a word of it. And I think that was the point. Um, I think there's some points to that. I think that's a very valid thing. I think this is, can be a little bit confusing. I think we actually can understand all of it and get to know the Tao and stuff like that, but we've got to do it really slowly through this. I'll give you an example. The way that can be spoken of is not the constant way. In other words, if I can name and define the Tao, 
That's not really the DAO because the DAO represents everything that's way bigger than the DAO. The name that can be named is not the constant name. In other words, the minute I call it the DAO, the minute I make it these things, the minute I try to define it in human terms, I've lost it. I can't do that. The DAO is way bigger than all of us and way bigger than that. And that's what this is saying. I'm not going to go through the rest of the Dao De Jing. We're going to do that in class. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what this looks like. All right, guys, that's all I got on our intro Taoism lecture. Um, we are going to spend the next few weeks kind of going through this religion, checking it out. We're going to do this um, a little bit longer and in a little bit more detail than Judaism and Hinduism. Because one thing that will be constant is every single person that is taking the IB test has to write about Taoism. It's in category C, which is like this is the only one we're doing. So you guys all have to do this. So we need to make sure we got this down well, which we will do and also have a lot of fun doing it. Um, have a good one and I will talk to you guys soon.